What's going on, everybody? This is the seventh Rapid Reaction Football Show from your boys at the Just Like Brothers Podcast. I am Laika Abibi to my right with uh, no soundboard, unfortunately, because we're going to do a segment uh, in just a second with the iPad. Is the owner of WJG Sports, Kai Jones. Kai, it was a crazy week 11. A uh, lot of results that shook up the entire Eastern North Carolina high school football season. Uh, a few in particular off the top of my head, but uh, ready ready to get the show started today, man? Yeah, man. Uh, today we are uh, going back and having ourselves a little bit of accountability. You know, they always talk about uh, accountability being important in football. So today we are going to go back and look at our old projections from the beginning of the season and see how that turned out. See how right it we didn't were. turn out good. It, it, didn't turn out, <laughs> it didn't turn out too well. But you know, uh, I think it's, it's important. Too, I, they're just predictions. I, right? I, th I think it's important to look back and you know, kind of, you know, make some notes or whatever. You know, we might even look at some of the comments on our predictions and see how <laughs> uh, how wrong you guys were too. Uh, so right. without further ado, let's get it started. Kai, who's the first conference we're going to look at? The two way Eastern Carolina Conference, which ah, of course, got just... turned upside down last night when Wes Craven went into. I mean, uh, welcomed in Washington again, twenty to fourteen. Yeah. Twenty to fourteen. Uh, Washington, of course, had a chance to win after being down twenty to nothing in the first half. Yeah. Uh, Washington also uh, talked a lot of junk about being ready for this game, and looks like they did not come out ready for it. Uh, yes, uh, they were, as you mentioned, down 20 to nothing. They get it back to 20 to 6 in the first play of the fourth quarter, and they scored again to make it 20 to 14, recovered an onside kick, uh, drove down the field, and on fourth and goal, they tried to uh, do the quarterback sneak, and it was. And it was apparently stuffed, although there was some there were some views that may have suggested otherwise, but there was no really definitive look as to yeah. whether he was That's sure how it or is not. When you go with quarterback yeah. sneaks, man. There's not really a, a good look. It's because, really a judgment call. Yeah, um, unless you have somebody who's right there perfectly lined up in this perfect spot. To but see not, nonetheless, um, Washington was dug themselves in a hole that they couldn't dig out of, and yeah. now because of that, Wes Craven has clutched a share. Washington. Uh, we'll play Green Central next week yep. to see if they can get a piece of the, of the conference championship. But nonetheless, the Green, Central, be the one seed. Green Central uh, uh, took a loss to Aiden Griffin last night, twenty-one to nothing. Uh, essentially, ends their season. I mean, you beat Washington, you might get off the bubble and into the playoffs, but it's a very big if considering that now you have guaranteed that you will be sixth in the conference. So. Uh, only, only five teams make it from a conference, so yeah, uh, that's t that's a tough blow for them. Of course, Kinston uh, got a win over North and North, nineteen to six, after it being six to six going in the third quarter. Uh, going into the final two, the final yeah, twelve minutes. Kinston will see Aiden Griffin. Whoever wins will get third place. Uh, and for Kinston, they've had a lot of struggles and a lot of injuries. For them, they, if they were to beat Aiden Griffin, that would be a very, very great right. accomplishment for Coach Diesel and uh, the boys out there. Of course, the uh, North and North, the one long team to beat Wes Craven, now will play South and North next week, who was off this week. Mm -hmm. uh, if they win, it will be their school record total for wins, and, as well uh, as it would clinch them the – Three or four, four. Fourth or fifth. Fourth or four or five. Okay. Yeah, four or five seed, depending on. Because well, yeah, think, they, lost Aiden, they lost to Aiden, they lost to Kinston, and they lost, lost to, to Washington. Washington. So right, so I think no matter what, they finish behind four. whoever. Well, then again, let me see. Yeah, because then that would just make it three to three, three and three for the loser of Aiden Griffin. Yeah, so that'd be three and three, and then North Alabama would be three and three. Right. And North Alabama would not have if Aiden it would Griffin, have the Aiden Griffin right now has lost to Wes Craven in Washington. So that's two. Uh, that yes. Was. So if they were to lose to Kenston, then that would put them tied with North Alabama, but North, they beat North Alabama head to head. Yes. And right now, Kenston has wins against, has losses to Washington, Wes Craven. And uh, that. That's it. That's it. Yeah. So if they were to lose Aiden Griffin, they drop the three and three, mm -hmm. but they beat North North head to head. So 
that puts them right ahead. That puts them ahead of North Moore. So either way, if North Moore wins, basically they get the fifth seed. Uh, Green Central would have to beat Washington in order to they would have to beat Washington and then hope for South Moore to I mean North Moore to lose to South Moore. Yep. Um, in order to be able to get into that top five. But anyway, let's uh, let's look at our prediction here. We both had Aiden Griffin finishing first. And then we had a four-way tie for second with West Craven, Washington, Green Central, Kenston, South and North, and North and North finishing last. Well, let's see. North and North is going to finish probably fifth. probably fifth. So, so it's uh, they, not and, too bad. And, but we but we did have them struggling, and most people had them struggling. Yeah, we, so we, they we didn't think they would live win more than probably two or three. So we got a guy give Jim Collins and yeah, staff they did a great job. And they uh, beat some good teams this year. South and Moore, we thought that they would continue their success from last year, beating North and Moore, but uh, been a tough season for them. They are now two and eight, and seven, two and seven, two and seven. Excuse yeah. me. And they next week we'll play North and Moore, which of course if they win three and seven, you beat North and Moore. I think that I think they'll take being North and North. Yeah, I, I think that's I think that's enough. I mean, because I mean, if Green City wins Washington, then I think. Well, no, because I think technically no, so, even, no South and North have lost to Green Central already, so yeah. that's they're, they're probably stuck to sixth place. Yeah, or seventh. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm talking about for North and North, it would probably put them out of the playoffs if Green City were to win and North and North were to lose. Wait, you think so? Because North and North beat Green Central, they did, but that would put them at sixth place in the conference. And well, no, because they'd be tied, so yeah, they'd be tied. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. We, a lot of <clears throat> confusing scenarios yeah. here. Uh, but anyway, Kenston, we had them finishing probably down there, you know, we, we felt tied for second, but right, yeah, we kind of they'd, they'd go three and three in the conference. I that's, so, that's kind of about what we thought. We thought Green Central probably go three and three in the conference there. They're looking at two and four, so they're probably six. Maybe even one and five. Yeah, one and five probably. Uh, so that's tough. Uh, Washington, of course, we had them, which we we want to do. Want to say like when we put out the preview show that we had uh, Washington and West Craven as two of the most dangerous teams. We we had about three or four teams we said could win it all. Yeah, win, we will win the conference. And, yeah. West Craven and, and Washington uh, probably get a drift and laid an egg to start out conference play. I think they'll probably win against Kent to go four and two and be third place. Um, but I mean, that, I could be wrong with that. I was wrong with this. Uh, well, but my, I will say my prediction has held true. The first to four did win, and it was West Craven. Yeah, West Craven was actually the first to four. So, or were they? You said four and two. Uh, let's see. I think actually no. Washington might have been yeah, the first. Yeah, Washington four. was first to four. Yeah. So West Craven. Yeah. West Craven was second to four. I guess. Yeah. But either way. Either way. They used um, to care on two A is so tough to predict because yeah, it's so difficult every it's, year. It's I mean, such an even league. I mean, just when you have. Uh, it's such a good league. Yeah. Um, every of course, and like I said, West, West shout out to West Craven, man. We I always talk about them being a dark dark horse in this conference. It's just like nobody talks about them, and then boom, they sneak up. They're always right there. Yeah, the they, they definitely snuck up this week for sure. Yeah, we, um, you don't want to see our prediction on that game. Oof, yeah, we, we definitely called that one. All yeah. right, we got through Eastern Carolina 2A. We love that conference, of course. Another conference we love is? All right, of course, we have the 3A, 4A Eastern Carolina uh, Conference. Of course. J.H. I had J.H. Rose finishing first. Uh not so great. Uh, I had South, South Central, Central finishing first. I had worse. South Central finishing second. Uh, not great at all. Not a great point. Not a great pick. Uh, CB Acock finishing third. Uh, could not be a great pick. Could be fourth or fourth. I would say or fifth. If, if Acock plays Eastern Wayne next week, I think if, I think if Rose were to lose. So Southern Wayne, which is not going to happen. I think CB Acock and CB Acock beats Eastern Wayne. I think no, because Rose would jump them because they won the head to head. So no. yeah. So yeah, uh, Rose. Of course, we had them finishing first. Well, you I did. Know, I, I had Rose. I had South first. Central, which is why I had them fourth. Uh, and then this was even worse. We both had Newburgh at five. 
Yeah, the newborn's looking at a number two seed right now. We did get six and seven right. Eastern Wayne and Southern Wayne um, pretty much looking like they are going to finish right there at the bottom. Um, yeah. Unless Eastern Wayne can beat. We definitely Chicago definitely got to apologize to Coach Noel. I mean, I mean <laughs> it's the Tory yeah, Noel effect, yeah. right? I don't think it will come that fast. It did. I mean, because it then, took Pamlico County a few years, but. Yeah, I was going to say, at the same time, we then we started getting on the Noel effect, and then here comes D.H. Conley. Yeah. Smacks him. I'm just. Of course, Conley, you had South Central winning. Yeah, I know. Uh, it was Jet bad. Rose second. Okay. Uh, Conley third. Acott fourth, which is looking about what they're going to finish. New Bern fifth. Okay. So, yeah. uh, sorry, Vikings. Yeah. Uh, Conley, Conley, yeah, South Central, uh, they, they Conley, kind of, of course, uh, won 30 to 21 against East Wayne last yeah, night. They did. Uh, New Bern beat Southern Wayne 59 to 0. Rose uh, beat Wolf down Dumbledore, South Central. South Central 49 to They seven. actually looked like a team that could win a conference championship last night. Yeah. I mean, and then ACOC, of course, uh, They've dealt with a lot of injuries and they've yeah. had a good schedule. They had a bye week. So, uh, right now it's looking like Conley has clinched at least a share. Yes, of the that's title. correct. New Bern is done with their conference schedule. They're 5 Bern, 1. Right. Uh, and Conley next plays. Week they'll play West Craven. Yes, Conley will play, play at South Central next week for the conference championship. Yeah, uh, pretty much. If, if Conley wins, they win the conference championship. And they're looking Both of us are looking very bad on that one. And of course, if South Central were to win, that would put them at three six and wins. five and three and three. Yes, and that would still put them behind Acock. Yeah, as long as a as long as Acock take care of, take, takes care of business against uh, Eastern Wayne. So yeah, it's looking like it's good. gonna. Yeah, I was gonna say it's looking like it's gonna. If Conley wins, it should be yeah. Conley, Newburn, Rose, Acock. Yeah. So South Central, uh, Eastern Wayne. South yeah, Central. we didn't we didn't do a great job on that conference. Um, just mostly because there was a lot of moving parts. So New Bern getting a new coach, uh, getting some players great coach. in. Yeah, a great and coach. great players. Yeah. Um, C D Acock, of course. They uh, they started great. Had some injuries. Yeah. Uh, lost uh, that lost that game to Rose, which was really, really yeah. That was a really tough one. And then of course the New Bern and Conley game, we kind of get a little blowout, but. Yeah. Uh, of course, Conley. We didn't. We didn't. We just when you look at the talent. We didn't. We didn't. By the way, I said the game. I said the league was going to come down to maybe like four or five points, like it did last year. I mean, yeah. That's what it came down to for South Central winning last year. I mean, yeah. It came down to a one point game right at the end of the year. So right. it's it's a it's a good conference. Another conference. That's I mean, of course, Conley. Conley lost. I mean, um, beat Rose, but it was on a few points. And, and, and a bit and a, con and a and a controversial play at the end, of course. Yeah. So uh, really, it did come down to those six points. I mean, because if Rose wins that game. Their only loss right now is the Newburn. They lost the Newburn by four points, and they had the lead in that game. Yeah, they so, had the lead that game. So, it, so really, I mean, ten. They points. could have got. Rose like, is really at this point looking at ten points away from the conference championship. Yeah, and a, so, maybe one bad call. Yeah. So, um, uh, nonetheless, we, we, we move. We, we move, move on. Yeah, uh, we move. All right, so this one we got, we got, we had pretty well. Um, what, what conference is it, Kai? It is the two A Eastern Plains Conference. Okay, okay. Uh, we both picked Southwest Edgecombe, who of course put a beat down in North Johnson last night, fifty three to nothing. They've been doing that um, to a lot of teams. Most teams, actually. Yeah. Uh, Betting Field, we had them finishing second. Um, and they're going to play next week. Southwest Edgecombe and Betty Field are going to play for the conference title next week. Yeah, I, I believe I, Betty I guess, Field. I guess so. I see. I, I'd say Southwest Edgecombe is probably seventeen point favorite at least. I like that. If, if I was the one putting like bets on high school games. Betting field, betting field is so, they're such a wild card because they had a game against Goldsboro and then we'll get to Goldsboro a little bit later. They, they had a game against Goldsboro where they laid an egg and then they came back and they started winning games like they were normally winning. Well, you and they had a few close it. calls. I mean, you gotta North look at. Ed. I think Goldsboro's better. I think if Goldsboro's in this conference, they'd probably be at least a three or two Two seed for this conference, I think. Hmm. I don't think they could touch Southwest Edgecombe, and I don't. I think Bettingfield. Well, I, I think mean, if they play ten times, sure. they play Bettingfield ten times. I think it'd be five and five. Okay, yeah, I like that. I like that. Um, but nonetheless, they're anyway, going to play for the conference uh, championship. Yeah. Uh, 
North Johnston we had finishing third, third and fourth. And actually, and we, had, we had the same predictions, actually. Yeah, we both had North Johnston and Fargo Central finishing third and fourth. And, of course, they will be finishing fifth and sixth. And we had Nash Central finishing fifth and North Pitt finishing sixth. North and Pitt. Of course, Nash Central will, will be third. And North yeah, Pitt North, finish North Pitt lost to Nash Central last fourth. night. Uh, Nash Central is now 5-5 five and five on the year. North Pitt, even though they're going to finish, uh, what, fifth? Um, no, fourth, actually. Yeah. Uh, even though they're, they're likely going to finish fourth, uh, that this is a very good step in the right direction for them. Uh, Farmville struggled a lot this year. Just got to be real. I mean, yeah. it, was just, it, was, it was just a rough year. Bad football. A lot of bad football. But South West Edgecombe, as long as they take care of business, they should what, run, run the table except for one get loss to uh, Tarboro. a Tarboro. And speaking of Tarboro. Next is the 1A Coastal Plains Conference, which Tarboro is the top of. And they shall stay on top of. Yep. Uh, Tarboro T. We had them finishing one, uh, but here, here comes the part. We had Riverside finishing second, and they're, <clears> finish, <throat> and they're probably going to finish sixth in the conference. Ooh. Yeah, not looking good. Riverside. Yeah, Pimlico County third. Uh, they're gonna finish second probably. They um, should. Yes, they're confident. They're they're actually their regular season is over. They're oh, already that's done. Right, that's right. They're so six and five, five and one, I think. Yeah. So they uh, feel, they finish second. And North side, South we, Creek. Uh, yeah, South Creek is probably gonna finish around there. Yeah, I would say South, South side. We have them finishing fifth. Maybe uh, is that right? Uh, it's looking like it. Yeah. Um, Southside did beat Riverside last night to get their fourth win of the year. They're probably uh, on the right side of the line right now. And here comes your it. staker right here. Jones yeah. Senior, you had them finishing six, and they, of course, had the fourth of their season. I, just, I haven't finishing seven. Northside had you finished in six, even though you probably won't finish with third. Yeah, Northside. North Feel side. like that sometimes, you know? Yeah, we didn't give Northside a lot of love, so that's that's my bad on that end. Uh they're looking at three and two in conference right now. So they win. They finish third. They beat Southside next week. Uh, Southside at two and three. Uh, actually, two and four. Uh, Southside would if they win, they would be three and three. And South Creek, uh, I don't, I don't remember who South. South Creek, Creek has to play Tarboro, correct? Uh, I'm not sure, but I, I, they might have already played Tarboro. Um, Let's see, I can look at that. But nonetheless, uh, yeah, that north side pick was terrible on my yeah, part. Yeah. I've had, I've had some, work, buddy. not my best work. Uh, Tarboro's at Riverside next week. Oh, so that means uh, Riverside is for sure finishing 1-5, and five, so that means they will be 6th in the conference. And um, south side finishes 5th if they lose, and then if everything holds, then South Creek will probably finish Fourth, I think. Oh yeah, that's right. South Creek is off. They're playing. Jones Senior was their game. Was right. supposed to be their game. So and that's three. Pimlico is supposed to have a bye. So yeah. That's... So that's three and three uh, yeah. for South Creek. Um, and like we said, North Side is three and two, and South Side is two and three. So South South, if North Side wins, they get the third. They get third. Versus if they lose, they probably tied. Time they probably there. get the they would probably get the five seed because right. because south side. but they this would be the case they beat South Creek they lost to they, they lost, get four South man. Creek south beat South, south side and South side would beat North side so it just would be crazy South Creek would fall to five and then North South side would be like fourth or third fourth, yeah yeah that mm. either way that's crazy either way epic Philly outside of Tarboro epic face plant for, yeah. for, for for me mostly but yeah uh let's uh, go to let's go to your some of your conferences 3a greater news conference let's GRNC see. we had Cleveland finishing first yeah. pretty good Clayton uh, second Clayton second Looking okay good. we did all right south you had South Johnson, I had Smithfield. So. Okay, so my top three is looking pretty good, but then I had I had what Triple S. You had Smithfield so fourth. Okay, yeah. Uh, West Johnson, we had them at fifth. They're looking at probably fourth or fifth, fourth. No, actually, is East Wake looking at fourth? East Wake is looking at fourth. If they if they, win, if they, if they were to win. Against Smithfield Selma this week, they will go to two and four, while West Johnson will be. Only Smithfield Selma would have to beat Clayton if they wanted to get uh, yeah. into the top five. So, yeah, uh, 
Well, at least my at least my top three is looking but if he, pretty but good, if, I guess. <laughs> but if but if Wes Johnson loses to Clayton, that means they would only have one win in the conference, and technically it would be Smithville Selma. Eastway has one win. Smithville Selma has no win. So if Smithville Selma were to win against Eastway, everyone would have three wins. Wes Johnson would finish fourth, and Eastway would finish fifth. Yeah. No, no, they finished. Well, that, that's a tough scenario. Yeah. yeah. yeah so because Eastwick, because so, that means Eastwick would have beaten West Johnson. So, West Johnson beat yeah. Smithville Summer, but Smithville Summer beat Eastwick. So that creates like a weird triangle. Effect yeah, I was there. gonna say. So, but either way, uh, all of those teams are you know probably not gonna make. Yeah, but three, anyway. four, five, six are probably. So yeah. you probably end up looking the best right now when you look at it. The fourth, you had Smithville Summer finishing fourth, fifth, and sixth. Well, me, I don't look too good right now because I had Sal finishing fourth. Uh, Smithville Summer ran a lot of injuries, had some players get, uh, you know, removed from the team, of course. Mm -hmm. um, just not the season that uh, looked like they might could have as they are now in nine straight losses after losing to Clayton last night. Was it 56-0? to Yeah. And, of course, uh, Cleveland beat West Johnson last night 47 uh, to nothing. And Sal Johnson beat Eastwick 44-14. So, yep. uh, yeah, just uh, not our best work here, buddy. Not our best well, work. At least well, my top three was good. Yeah, your top three was Outside good. Outside of that, not really the best. Yeah, which, I mean, it, it, it could, could change. Who knows? Four, four, five, six is kind of whatever. Yeah. Just because, of the, you know, but anyway. Well, we'll see. Anyway, let's yeah, let's, let's, let's keep. Moving. Ah, all right. Now here's I want you to talk about these two teams yeah. because I'm just we've already spoiled it for you. The WJG Sports Game of the Week for November eighth is Princeton Rose. Yes, it is. Well, the one in Carolina Conference title, of course. Princeton right now was nine and zero, taking care of business last night against uh, Lakewood. Yep, I can't remember the score. Forty two to nothing. Yes. Yeah, 42 to nothing. And, Rosewood, it was a little bit of a... Little Rosewood bit. might have been looking ahead just a little bit there. Uh, North Duplin, they uh, needed a comeback in, this, in the fourth quarter in order to beat North Duplin 28 to 21. Uh, but you know any Duplin but, school is good. So. Yeah, but they did they did handle their business, did take care of it, uh, eventually uh, got right. And so now they are sitting at 9-1, and, and whoever wins... Takes all for the conference title next week, as Princeton will have their senior night. Uh, a lot of the seniors from Princeton have told me that they have been looking forward to this game for about two years since they realized that hey, our senior night is going to be Rosewood. Uh, uh, when you look at it, it's, it's very tough to call because I, I can think about it like this. We uh, talked about this a little last night on the I, way back. I, from I, I, think I'm, I think about it like this. Okay, I can look at it as Rosewood um, laid an egg versus North Duke kind of sort of, while Princeton beat them down pretty easily. What was it? I think 59 to 0, 57 to 0, something like that. So it's like, okay, I could take something from that, but. It really just throw the records out the window. I, I think, say, it's, just, yeah. I yeah. think yeah. It's, it's it's pretty much just we. I, nobody knows who's going to win that game until that game actually will start playing. Yeah. And I think we'll have a better sense. I of really want to win the game. I really want to uh, win see the right team now. Uh, let's see. What are, what are we looking at here? Uh, Hamilton. Yep. We are looking at third right now, unless. North Dublin, we get we got Union correct. We got yeah. We got we both we both picked Union last. Uh, we both picked Princeton to win the conference. And Rosewood uh, second. second. So that means so we technically, have So technically, I guess we technically have already picked Princeton to win this one. I guess if we want to stay consistent, unless we want to jump ship. Uh, but for right now, I'm just going to kind of leave it as it is. Uh, one and two, I'm, I'm not going to pick a winner yet. Uh, I'll, I'll let y'all. I prefer not to speak yet. I prefer not to speak yet. Let's see, who does uh, Lakewood play tomorrow? Uh, I'm going to play next week. Uh, yeah, let's see. Lakewood has... Union. Union next week, so... They should know. win that, and if you go to the standings... So, right let's there, see. That means North Duplin and Hobson will play each other. So, whoever wins that probably gets third place. Yeah. Uh, 
because then, that will mean North Duplin finish. That means if, if North and Hobson will finish Yeah, two I was going to say if North Duplin wins and, and uh, Lakewood, will Lakewood two wins. Three. Oh my goodness, that would just create a scenario. That would just create three, two and three teams, and then one zero and five team. Of course, Lakewood. Let's see, they lost to Princeton, lost to Rosewood, they lost, lost to Hobton, Hobton, and they beat North. So Duplin. if North Duplin so, were to beat Hobton, that means we have another triangle here. Yeah, <laughs> another and triangle. A uh, triangle that we don't want to. The we math is going to hurt like, yeah. our head. So yeah, so we're just going to leave that one to it. I think Hopton has the best record of those three teams. I mean, I guess technically Hopton. Yeah, Hopton's at two and two and six and four in overall. Right, two and two in conference. So Hopton, Hopton, all they do, all they have to do is win, and they're the number three team. Of course, uh, North Duplin, they win. They're six and five versus six yeah. and five. So. Yeah. And I guess they would jump late. I guess they would jump pots. And so if that were to happen, we have another crazy. We'd be right. Mission. We'd be we'd be completely right. Because yeah. then it'd be North Duplin was third, Hopton was fourth, they could fifth, Union sixth, just like we said. And of course Princeton would have to beat Rosewood to make us perfect. So uh, I think we did pretty good in that conference. I, 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 I feel good. I feel good about that. Yeah. Um let's go two A East Central. Oh boy. This one got crazy last night. We both had the last two weeks, really. Yeah, uh, we both had Wallace Rose Hill finishing first. Uh, it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna much. happen. Clint has already clinched that title uh, by beating who did they beat last night. They beat uh, James Keenan. I don't think so. I think it was James Keenan. Do uh, you want me to check? Yeah. Uh, well, I've used the dark horse pun a couple of times. They're really not a dark horse, actually. Yeah. They're, they're, they're they were good. never a dark horse. They were never a dark horse. I just did the dark horse thing just to make you angry. Just I'm awful. so sorry. It was a good pun. It's an awful it was a good pun, pun people. Awful pun. No, it wasn't. It, the good, the bad puns are the good ones. I'm telling you. Awful pun. Okay, Clinton beat James Keenan yeah, 35 to 13. James uh, King clinched the Wallace East Central Rose, Conference title already. Wallace Rose Hill last night lost to East Duplin and probably one of the most surprising games in all of the state, really. I mean, 16 to 14. Uh, East Duplin is now. Heritage, Heritage beat Rose. Now we have Wallace Rose Hill at 2 and 2. Wallace Rose Hill is at Goldsboro two two. at 2 and 2. Goldsboro, East Duplin at 2 and 2. Goldsboro beat Midway, Midway at 2 and 2. But I said Goldsboro beat Midway last week, 15 to nothing. Uh, Huge enough. Goldsboro is probably in the playoffs now. Would you say? Yeah, they're probably definitely gonna be in the playoffs. And now. Goldsboro could oh, actually be easy. staring at a three seed if they get the right results. Well, they could be staring at a two seed as well. They could. Yes, they could. Goldsboro plays East Duplin next week, correct? Yeah. So they win they, that, they go to three and two. Right. Say Wallace Rose Hill loses, they go to two and three. Loses to James Keenan, which of course James which Keenan would, is zero and four. Uh, so they, so, they so, go to two and three. They go to two and three, and then midway, if they lose to Clinton, they'd be two and three, and Goldsboro three. is the two seed. We'll get the two seed automatic bid, and probably would get to host a game. Maybe. So maybe. maybe. So it's looking like the borough could have a playoff game here. From the borough to the playoffs. Yeah. Again. But of course, the more likely scenario is Goldsboro win is maybe Goldsboro wins. They still Wallace finish Road, three and two. Three, three and two. They Wallace get the, Hill probably they get the third seed, so which means they probably would get something behind, like something like no, really? eleven or twelve seed. Um, if, they, if they play Wallace a good game, I would. Seed. If they play a good game, they yeah. they can go anywhere. Wallace would get two seed. Competitive. East Duplin would fall to fifth, and if James Midway Keenan, loses to James Keenan. Really faltered. By I say Midway if they were to. I think Midway. It would be eight and three and two and three if they lose. Yeah, so I think Midway would technically be the four seed in that, and East Duplin would have to just kind of hope that they get in, which I think that they will. I think I think East Duplin gets in. East Central Conference Keenan has playoffs. been really good. I mean, yeah, I mean every team James is Keenan, at five hundred or, or better. Is James Keenan has just really struggled in conference play. That's yeah. Just, yeah, that's Midway good. has too. Technically, when you look at yeah, it, they were, they, didn't they start seven and zero? Yeah, they were six and zero coming. Or six and zero, six and zero, and they lost, been two and two. So, right now we had uh, Wallace Rose Hill winning, winning it. Uh, so, mm. Clinton finishing second. Eh, you know, uh, Clinton Clinton scoring points left and right. Goldsboro finishing third. We'll still be that would be back. We'll and for Coach Sam Ray, back. two years at the helm, making the playoffs both years, and then they win a playoff game last year. Yeah, so they. That would be a really that would be really nice for them. 
He, we had East Duplin finish at fourth, so that is Could happen. either Goldsboro or Mid. I mean, Goldsboro or East Duplin is going to be wrong. So we did get Midway wrong. They're not going to finish last. Yeah, we, Midway is not going to finish sixth. Uh, James Keenan is going to finish fifth. And you know what? There was a very sassy comment about James Keenan. Uh -oh. Our James Keenan prediction here. Let's let's look up this. User. Did you find it? Oh uh, yeah, uh, user on IG S A L. 3M underscore K. So Salem underscore K with a 3 instead of an E. Yeah. So Salem K. Uh, he said at WJG, at WJG Sports, keep sleeping. We're going to wake y'all up. Hashtag. Pound sign. James Keenan. Hashtag. Pound sign. In 2019, we call that a hashtag, Kai Jones. Pound sign. Pound yeah. sign. That's old. you old school. I like no, I'm just kind of with it. You know. But and hashtag of course, James uh, Keenan. Another user. Comment on it. Princess, let's see, P R I I N C E S S dot key dot dot K E E. Of course, she said uh, two 100 emojis to that comment. Um, so, um, yeah, we were not wrong. We weren't. Yeah, so. We're not, we're we're not gonna correct keep, on we're, a lot of things, but we got that one. Yeah, we're gonna keep, we're gonna keep continuing on here. Uh, uh, 4A Northern Athletic Conference. Um, well, it looks course, like Corinth Holders, it's looking like we're gonna be absolutely right on Corinth Holders finishing six, considering that they uh, lost an overtime to Nightdale and missed extra point. point. Missed extra point. And they were up 14 to nothing at halftime. Yeah, you, uh, you hate to see it. Yeah, pretty much. Unfortunately, let's see, we had. Right now, we are. I think this one we got absolutely perfect though. Because I, I, I we, because Heritage beat Rollsville last night, a really good Rollsville team too. Yeah, uh, with uh, with Nightdale winning, they should finish. Uh, if you go to the standings for the Northern Four A, uh, it's looking. Let's see. So right Heritage now, still has to play Wake Forest, I believe. Ooh, that's a big great game. Heritage versus. Wake Forest next week for the conference title. Yep. Both teams are now 4-0. Uh, Heritage 7-3 and overall. Wake Forest, just the one loss. It's at Wake Forest. Uh, uh, Wake Forest. Of course, we had Wake Forest finishing first. Heritage second. Heritage Rollsville second. third. Rollsville third. And right now, Rollsville is actually third. And they, Wake Forest, they got Corinth holders next week, so if they win... They would finish, they would clinch the And then seed. Nightdale plays Wakefield, right? Yeah, Nightdale plays So Wakefield. if Wakefield wins, we would get that all correct. We need Wake Forest and Wakefield to win. Yeah, Wake Forest, Wakefield, and Rollsville to win. And we, we got, we got uh, that we, one on the yeah, nose. we got that one on the nose. So I think we did a great job there, too. Uh, that is actually all the conferences. Wow. Yeah, we have, we have made it uh, finally through. Of course, we didn't talk. We, we did not uh, talk, let's, let's about talk about some game, our game of the weeks. Of course, uh, we didn't talk about eight man in general, but we'll we'll get to that. We'll, we'll start with uh, your game of the week. Uh, I was at Halifax Academy versus Bethel Christian, uh, the Division Two eight man state championship game for the NCISAA. Right. Uh, Halifax Academy defeated uh, Bethel Christian thirty eight to eight to uh, win their first uh, win their first eight man state title, I believe. I think it's ever. Yeah. Um, Justin Hayes from Rock, Reno Rapids Daily Herald, of, of course, friend of both of ours, yeah. uh, told me that it, the last time they won a state title in football, they were probably playing 11-man football. So yeah. uh, Eli Harris had nearly 200 yards rushing and three touchdowns. The biggest turning point of the game, it was scoreless for the first 22 minutes. Uh, and uh, Halifax is about to punt to Bethel. Uh, and... Uh, one of the players did not get out of the way of the punt, and it went off of him, and Halifax recovered, took that possession down for a touchdown, uh, and then on the ensuing kickoff, they recover the onside kick, and then go down the field for another touchdown, and from 0-0, zero to zero, it was 16 nothing at half, and Bethel really couldn't recover. They had a lot of injuries as well. Connor Williams hurt his shoulder, so Easton True had to play most of the game. Easton did very well. Uh, considering the circumstances, but nonetheless, uh, I was wrong about Halifax multiple times this year. They are very deserving of a conference championship, Try or excuse me, state championship. Try to tell you, man. You did. Speaking of that, we'll 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 just give it to you. It took him eight weeks, but Kai's back in the winner's circle, people. He won game picks presented by We Up Athletic. By the way, shout out to Coach Oates. Uh, but yeah, that was my game of the week. How was yours? <laughs> 
Well, I also just want to say that, you know, I test is very important, and I have actually seen Halifax Academy. You hadn't, so you should have listened to me. I knew what I was talking about. I knew what I was doing. Kai knows football, guys. I don't know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Kai, where did That's you? That's a lot. But uh, anyway, Kai, uh, where did you go? You went to two games, but your game of the week uh, was Beargrass versus games, Spring Creek. Uh, Spring Creek versus Beargrass. Of course, Spring Creek is independent, so they didn't have any conference this year. So, but they did win in a very crazy way. Huh? Fifty-two to thirty-five. They went down twenty-one to nothing in the first quarter and scored forty-five unanswered to storm back and. It's just one of those great nights. Those kids have a great spirit and a great energy around them. I don't think any um, team they they at least I've been impressed with how hard they played all year. Yeah. I know they've had a lot of games where it could have gone either way. Really, they could if some results go their way. They're looking at probably four wins. Would you yeah, say? yeah. I mean, they they realistically they could have won four games this year. Uh, finished with two wins. I think that's pretty good. First year independence. Uh, a lot of freshmen. A lot of sophomores. I mean, looking at that crowd, you can never tell that they were cheering on a one and nine team. I mean, they were really excited. Uh, of course, they finished two and two at home. That's important to note. Yeah, two and two at home versus you know zero and seven on the road. Uh, which of course now a lot of those home, a lot of those road games have come home games now. So from like, from this so year. So yeah, yeah. I was gonna say I don't know how their schedule's looking like yeah. next year, but they uh, should. Which normally, if you play uh, home. If, if you get all, if you played a lot of road games this year, like what they play seven, you said seven. they play seven. Yeah. So maybe they could get seven home games yeah. uh, next year. And of course, we'll they'll see. be more excited. I'm sure they'll have some freshmen who will be more excited to play. Um, that's really just a big thing for them. That whole community, just getting people excited about football, getting the kids to play. Uh, if this is a thing that is going to be a long term success, and just making Spring Creek a viable. Football program. It's going to take uh, you know Coach Robertson, you know who's done a great job, uh, going down to Spring Creek and trying to get the youth to play football. And you know? shout out to you because you got some highlights onto WCTI again for our guys Brian North and Brett Kennedy. Yeah. And, you, and, they, um, and those Spring Creek folks had to have felt really good about. Yeah, that. of course. Um, Southern Wayne and New Bern Highlights were also uh, sitting them. You know, uh, you got a big shout out of just WCTI for always, uh, you know, rock, rocking with us. Uh, Brian mm -hmm. North, he does a great job of just trying to get as many games in as possible. And uh, on the football and, front, uh, I, the, I was going to say, I remember, yes, uh, yeah, shout out to the Blitz, of course. Uh, we, uh, I, uh, of course, I sent highlights from a couple weeks ago. I was watching the North and North game, and you pronounced my name wrong, but we're going to work on it, Brian. You got it next time. I believe in you. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I, I um, know where I know where also, I know also got a sh shout out to uh, Parrot Academy. They are going to play. Oh, yeah. They're going to play in the state game. championship game, seventy-three to sixty yeah. over Faith Christian. After Faith Christian scored seventy-two on them last year in the semifinals, Parrot comes back this year, 73. scores seventy-three. Trey McLawhorn. Uh, did get hurt at the end of the game. Uh, I believe it was a knee injury. I'm not sure how serious it is. But, uh, oh, God, guess what? The soundboard's coming back. But give me just a second. Trey McLaughlin finished with 367 yards and six touchdowns. That, that's a... It's an ad. It's an ad. Oh, my God. Really? This, no, this is the art of doing this straight up, like, just straight down, you know? Uh, oh, my goodness. He's got it. But that's exactly how Parrot felt. I mean, Parrot uh, and Faith, I don't think there was a single defensive stop in that game. Nonetheless, <laughs> um, I'm not sure who they're playing in the state championship game next week. Uh, uh, do you know? I, uh, not. I know it was between Grace Christian and, and Carrie, I believe. Carrie Christian. Uh, but I, I, I don't think I don't think either of those teams are going to be anything. You, as long as they have yeah. trade for next week, they should be. The favorites. I really think they should be anyway. I mean, Wilkes Thomas is throwing the ball good. Nick Harrison has been making plays. Blake Smith as well. Big dog season, you know. <laughs> now this has just become a – yeah, So okay. So they're playing Grace Christian next week at Parrot for the state championship in Division One Eight man. Uh, and shout out to – Shout out to uh, shout out to Parrot and Matt Beeman and the whole team. So yeah, yeah. the Matt the Matt Beeman revenge tour, as I call it. Uh, 
Oh yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure they remember everything about what happened last year. Oh goodness. Yeah, he's coming through. <laughs> <laughs> well. Oh my goodness! Someone take the soundboard away. Actually. I'm... Anyway. All right, that is our football <laughs> show. Uh, of course, you can follow him at Strike a Nation twenty four underscore or at LMA Preps, whichever one you prefer. I prefer neither, and you should not prefer either of them either. You can follow Kai at MMJ Kai Jones. You can follow WJG Sports on all social media platforms. WJG underscore sports for Twitter. WJG Sports for Facebook and Instagram. And subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're at over 400 subs now. Let's make it. Let's make it 500 uh, sometime very soon. Of course, continue to help us grow. We like to thank our sponsors, We Up Athletic Group and Mo's Automotive from Kinston. Yeah. Uh, one more time, mention WJG Sports at Mo's Automotive from Kinston. You get five dollars off of your service. Yes, you do. Uh, and of course, thank you again for watching. We'll catch catch us Wednesday for the Just Like Brothers podcast. We have two really good guests from around the, the borough uh, that you don't want to miss out on. So uh, check us out then, and we'll see you later.